Hello and good evening, everybody. On this beautiful evening uh, here in Portugal, we are asking the question, moving to Portugal, how do you know you're making the right choice? It's a great question. Uh, Expats Portugal are well known for the technical and professional advice and support that's given from uh, the Dream Team panelists, some of which you'll see, see on the uh, Dream Team session at nine o'clock this evening. And so yeah, a lot of uh, excellent professional services services that you can get access to with Expats Portugal. And a slightly different angle tonight with Deb O'Grady, who is going to be answering that question. How do you know you're making the right choice? And we welcome your questions on this subject. So let's say good evening to you on this Expats Portugal Calling webinar, Deb, Deb O'Grady in Cascais tonight. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's sunny, lovely and sunny. Always sunny. It looks lovely there. Is that the sun coming through the window or have you got some fabulous lighting? Or a bit of both? Yeah, a, bit of, a bit of both, actually. A bit of both. That's lovely to hear. So lovely to meet you. Great to have you here. And you are answering this important question, whether people... Yeah or how people find out if they're making the right choice. It's a very important question, obviously. Um, and I think you prefer to refer to yourself as a mentor rather than a life coach. It's, it's, it's within yeah. that realm, though, isn't it, of, of asking these the soft stuff, if you like, the personal development angle, rather than the, the hard skills of you know how to move to Portugal and the visas and the currency and that sort of thing. I think, in a way, that's the easy thing, because um, you can always find that knowledge outside of yourself you can always find right but it's the emotion it's like why am I moving mm. that's the biggie like why am I am I wanting to get away from something or am I wanting to go towards something and it's getting absolute clarity on oh my god I really want to I really want to make this move because I want xyz and then it's making those xyz's happen Fantastic. OK, so we'll unfold that tonight. Before we do, uh, can we find out a bit more about you? You're obviously uh, in Portugal yourself. You, you've been through this process. You've chosen Portugal. How? Let, let's get to that after we found out how you got into mentoring and coaching. What's your background with that? Well, I used to have a, a brand marketing agency. So I used to work with um, big fashion brands like Hugo Boss. And then I came online and started working as a brand coach for entrepreneurs um, the more I worked with entrepreneurs in creating digital programs and then um, making passive income, I realized that actually they wanted to make the passive income, but it actually was for their dream life. And so while we were coaching on the business side, it was like, why do you want the money? Why do you want the business? Uh, and a lot of people said, it's because I want to move abroad. Oh. And so it kind of transpired into actually, what does that look like? How do you want to earn? How do you want to live? Right. And, you know, it's a lot of questions that we don't really get asked as we get older. You know, we just and and so it's with something so big as moving abroad, it's we have to ask these questions so that we make the right choices. I've got to come back to that in a little while. Why? Why that? Uh... Um, it's not such an issue as we get older. Um, before we do, let's say a few hellos. Tom's in Ohio, um, recovering from a wonderful trip to Portugal. Uh, Debbie, I love this. I love your Zoom name, Debbie. Debbie, soon in Coimbra. Hi from wonderful Florida. I'm leaving very soon. Soon in capital letters. Brilliant. Um, Ed and Sharon are in Ontario, Canada, where it's minus six. We are so lucky here, Deb, aren't we, tonight? Um, yeah. Hello, Palm Springs, um, USA, of course. Julie, last Friday, we had our visa application in San Francisco. The countdown clock is... Is officially ticking fantastic so this is perhaps a timely webinar tonight george we, we were talking briefly about the airport uh, before the start of the webinar george asking when will they build a new airport i'll put that to the dream team later on george because they might know uh that's nine o'clock and uh, thea in san diego tom smith i showed my wife the pictures of portugal I took and she was very impressed. Also, Newark Airport was much worse than Lisbon, so that's good to know. Um, I'm your wife's friend from the library. I think that's a message for somebody else there. Uh, Laurie is in, in Tamar. But out to you, Laurie. Good evening. Good to see you. And I want to get away from the cold oh, and, snow. and the snow. Is that enough of a reason? We're going to find out, aren't we, um, with this? So you've moved to Portugal. You've done it yourself. Can we? Can I be nosy and ask you about your process? Because you're talking about not just the what you're doing, but what I'm, I'm, I'm gleaning from what you said is the why. Yeah, can, the can why. I ask what, it, what the why was for you and, and the process you went through to qualify Portugal for yourself? 
Yeah, so um, me and my husband were doing a retreat in 2022 and we were in Spain. Um, we arrived in Lee's Bradford Airport and it was cold. There was a lot of people arguing and we just looked at each other and I said, why in, in the world did we choose this place? And it opened the bigger conversation. Why? Um and so my daughter was 13 at the time. So it's a really kind of critical age with her friends. And I said, would you want to live here or should we go live somewhere else? And it, all of a sudden there was a lot of fright. It was like, and so we just started playing with the idea of where do we want to live? If we both work for ourselves, we can work anywhere. And we wanted beach and city. Um, and so we just basically started looking where we wanted to go. We'd never been to Lisbon before. Um, we'd heard great things about it. And we just came here and got this really good feeling that felt like home. And wow. so in understanding this felt like a good place, we got really clear on why we wanted to leave and why we wanted to leave England was mainly we when we came back from Spain, it felt like we'd only been there two weeks yet we'd missed the summer. You know, it was it was like those we, couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, we came back in, I think it was like um first week in September. And I was like, we're gonna have to put all our, our outdoor furniture away. And it was that kind of it's quite that's it. Is that that short space of summer that we actually have now? Um and everybody was moaning and we just kind of thought, when's the last time we went on an adventure? You know, we get bogged down, we're getting married and having children. And then years go by, years go by. And we basically said, right, should we do this? So it's like a breakdown moment, like a moment. You, I mean, that's an initial moment of clarity, isn't it? It's like knowing where you don't want to be rather than where you do want to be. But it began the process for you. You just realised you didn't want to be in the UK anymore. Yeah, I think, you know, um, there was so much, there was so much bad press as well. Like everywhere, everywhere I was going, people were moaning about cost of living and yeah. moaning about this, that and the other. And it was like, you know, and it was kind of, it was kind of thinking, what don't I like here? And obviously the weather is a big thing, mm. but it was also the way of life. Yeah. Like the quality of life here is, I feel more at home here. Yeah. So rather than stay in the UK and moan about it and join the other people, you decided to do take action and do something about it. Yeah, I did. Right. And don't get me wrong, it's scary. Yes. Yeah. And a, and a, a, a teenage daughter to consider in that mix as well. So could you tell us a little bit about that before we get into the process more generally for people and answer some questions? Uh, please get your questions in the chat um, for Deb O'Grady here, who's um, helping you um, make the decision or, or to see if the decision to move to Portugal is right for you. Tell us a bit more about your backstory, though, Deb, before we get into those questions. Um, so we basically was thinking we 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 thought right okay we're going to we're going to make this move and my daughter was really up and down one minute she was in next minute she was out um and we all said we need to be clear about why we're doing this and i think that was really clear and we had so many recce trips i mean you know at one point it was like i felt more home here in 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 lisbon um and it just felt i think the journey here it took us about i would say a year but in that process, when I actually arrived here, I felt like I'd been here in place because everything that had changed in my life was getting ready for this point. Mm. You know, and I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to swim every day. Well, actually, you, there are certain things that you can do in your own life to start implementing those changes now. You right. know, you've got to make that change. Being in a different environment isn't always going to make that change for you. You've got to make it and so I think it's kind of I think with kids it's often harder mm -hmm. um you know we often think of there's children also retirement people are kind of like how can I be financially stable um you know how's it going to work with taxes but there is over always a way and I think if you're you're actually thinking about moving abroad there's that element that you've got to at least try <laughs> You know? yeah, fair enough. Well, okay, you got your clarity because I'm going to talk about some of the principles of your work that I'm aware of. And the first one is gaining clarity and test driving your new life, which I think you've just alluded to there. 
if somebody says they want to swim every day, they can start that already, can't they? And and sort of train and get ready for their new life abroad or wherever they're going. In this case, of course, Portugal. Tell us a bit more about test driving your new life. Well, a lot of people, a lot as human beings, our behaviour is to if we put kind of something about what if we think about what we want, we kind of hang it up over here and it's still a dream. And so we can start thinking about, oh, this would be great. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be. But actually, you can start living little bits of that now. And so, first of all, everybody needs to do that recce trip. Um, you're going to get a feel for the people like we were so the kindness of the people, the openness of the people. It was like straight away. These are our kind of people yeah. Um things that people thought we were quite odd in the UK. You know, it just just felt really at home here. Smiling, the, at, smiling at people, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, all the time, you know, it's right. like, hi, yeah. hi, yeah. you know, and, and chatting to strangers. It was just. I just it just felt really good. So it's about getting clear about why you want to come here. It's about getting that clarity. And it's also about not just thinking that whatever's going on at home, coming to somewhere sunny is going to make it all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's about thinking, why do I want to do it? How am I going to live? And it's also not coming here as a tourist. Okay. So book the Airbnb you know, go to the local supermarkets. It's the little things, but it makes all the difference. And that's what you mean by the test drive? Yeah, you, you're test driving things in England. So you come over here, you, you kind of feel like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm in an Airbnb. Um, we're not eating. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're eating in more, but it's it's more healthy. Mm -hmm. And it's about, adapt it's basically kind of looking at your life here and your life of where you are on holiday and thinking how you can intertwine that so it's not such a shock when you get here. Okay. It's basically getting clear on, I love this bit. I need to, I mean, I'm sure people have, when people have gone on holiday, there's little bits of your routine that you had on holiday, even if it was like just a week, that you get home and you think, oh, I, I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to recreate this here. Mm -hmm. it's about doing those things okay. it's about a, a warm-up almost okay it's a warm-up it's a wrecking yeah. yeah so okay so we let's say we've got to that stage you've been through that and there yes. are people here in various states of of the process um and there, there is if i if i remember correctly and from what i hear from other people you know you, people get very excited about coming and then there are these sort of dark nights of the soul and and, and mo soul searching moments where you do suddenly wonder am i doing the right thing a lot of things yeah. maybe have been put into motion <laughs> like you know like the visa process um, like opening a bank account various technical things that need to take place and you've done them and then suddenly that um you know overwhelming sense of positivity about things for some yeah. reason it can be very mysterious can't it suddenly vanishes yeah. evaporates and yeah. you and, and you need to sort of regenerate or recapture the all of those all the, the I don't know what it is the drive to to make the move and you talk about this as well don't you the the, the self trust the belief in the process how how do you coach people with that how, how do you get back in touch with that vision and and the test driving you've been doing it's all it's if you had this idea I believe if you had an idea to move somewhere it's a desire that you really want to make happen yeah. and so that lack of self but that there's a, there has to be a element of belief that well of course this can happen of course you can make this happen like um and i think there's or you're trying to look for certainty a lot of people look for certainty so they stay in the same job for so long even though they don't like it but it's certain you know we we stay in a um in a country but we know it's certain but actually nothing certain <laughs> You know, you can lose a job tomorrow. You can have, Ill, like, life is for living, mm -hmm. you know, and we only get one chance. And I would much prefer go for it and figure it out than think, hmm, they're so lucky. I wish I did. And because... if only, because I think that's another part of your work, isn't it? This living with the, the regret you might have if you don't do, if you don't make the jump and, and, and do the move. There's always, it's about building up that resilience, like, we had schools, we had, we had knockbacks. We had a lot, a lot of knockbacks. And it's understanding instead of, if you've got a belief that this isn't gonna work, that 
that knockback is just going to go, hmm, well, I kind of thought it wouldn't work. Mm. But if you've got this strong belief that this is going to work out, and actually I'm a really resourceful person, and so if A, B, or C goes wrong, I'll go figure it out somewhere else. And actually, if you think about things that have gone wrong in your life, there has often been a better thing that has come up. You know, people have got made redundant. Oh, but I set up a business. This happened, that happened, but something better happened. And so it's all about really having that resilience to go, yeah, it's kind of scary. But actually, if you're unhappy where you are, that's even more scary. Yes. Yeah, yeah fair enough. And this is a, a, something somebody might be able to do for themselves, but this is the beauty of having a mentor, isn't it? it so when it does get a bit difficult and sticky and, and awkward, you've got somebody to remind you of these things and bring you back on onto track and remind you of the things that you said and and promised that you were going to do in the first place. So, so this is where the mentorship comes in, I think, because it, would you agree? I mean, it's quite hard to, to generate this alone, isn't it? If you have a, a knock to your confidence, how on earth do you do that alone? Is that the beauty of having a mentor in that sort of situation? Yeah, I think it's basically setting a promise of intention of what you want to achieve. And it's creating those goals and actions so that you're actively moving in that direction. Um, but with a lot of people that I've worked with who are moving abroad, um, there is a lot of uncertainty. It's so easy to fall back and go, well, it didn't work out. You know, there are hurdles to go through. Um, but working with, you know, hundreds of mainly women, you know, especially with children, we're kind of thinking, you know, there's fears there. What if I, what if I mess up my child's education? What if it doesn't work out? How's it going to work if I just, there's just me and my husband that know each other? There's all these fears. And actually, where are these fears going? They're normally just staying here. Mm -hmm. And then you get to that point where you're here and you go, this is really scary. And I didn't think about this because I didn't want to think about it. You know, and then you can have a bumpy ride when you're here. If you preempt that and you go, oh, this is a different way of thinking about it. This could be fun. And you start creating those skills if you like where you go i know i knew this was coming and mm. i can handle this okay. and that feels great right so part of the coaching the mentoring is a mindset change to yeah. respond differently to yeah. those inevitable things that will come up for people which are just human nature after all aren't they they're they're, they're, they're part well, we all live in fit yeah there's fears in everything you know yeah. yeah um there's there's always things that but you know as i say there's there's fear in staying put and i think that's the big decision what fears me more staying where I am yes or getting well informed and getting the support I need and then giving it a go very good okay um we've had um, a Portuguese moment I did ask people to share their Portuguese moment and uh, or moments that they're having uh, here in their new life in Portugal Laurie has uh, had a Portuguese neighbor who speaks no English just drop off a huge thing of fruit I don't oh. even know what it, I don't even know what it is <laughs> Says Laurie. So may, maybe later on when we stop recording, you can hold it up for us, Laurie, and we'll help you out with that. And if we can't figure that out here, we'll take that to the dream team at nine. Um, <laughs> I'm glad um, I, I'm glad you could be here for the webinar. That's Debbie talking to someone else, but also says I've been a member for months and these are so helpful. I'm assuming you're referring to the webinars that we do every week, 7.30 and 9 on a Thursday evening. And there's a Botard, of course, from Laurie in Tamar. Um, Ed and Sharon, they, they, they're the ones who want to get away from the, the uh, colder no. climate and into the warmer climate, as George describes it. And Gail, totally agree with Deb. Don't wait to make changes like improving your physical and mental wellness. Get your habits and routines in place to support your wellness before you move. So that's a nice confirmation of what you're talking about here. Can you tell us more about other changes, mindset, adaptations, before the move rather than waiting for it all to take place once you've got here? Yeah, I think it's about understanding what that new lifestyle would be. Um, but it's not just a lifestyle. It's um, what you when you come to a new country, you're totally, nobody knows you. Mm. Nobody knows you. And so you getting in the best possible shape is where you're being so authentically you in an environment where you're going to attract the right type of friends. And so, 
you know, if you've got, um, you know, a lot of people, as we move here, adults aren't so great at making friends. You know, kids are brilliant, yeah. you know? And so, and so how do we make friends? You know, there's not really anything out there to go, I really want friends, but I've had my friends for all my life. And then I'm going to a foreign country. How does that work? Well, it's normally you get a shared experience, you know, it's hobbies or doing yeah. something you like. And often we are so busy in our work and with family that we actually f- even forgotten what we've actually, what we actually like doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a chance, this reset and moving to a new country is a chance a to rediscover those things. Yeah. It's a total reset. It's like, don't just move countries. You, you know, it's about reset. It's about you, your relationships, how you live. Like, how do you want this to be? Because you're just about to press a reset button and you can change everything. And you make a very good point there, Deb. But yes, that that's that's very interesting because when you move abroad, as you say, nobody knows you. So you have the chance. I mean, on the one hand, that sounds terrifying. But on the <laughs> other hand, it sounds great, doesn't it? Because you can reinvent yourself on arrival because no one's going to say, hold on. Carl's were acting weird. I mean, people do say Carl's acting weird. Let me use a different example. Um, somebody, somebody, you know, might say Tom's acting strange if he's doing this at work and in his community. But if yeah. he's if he's a landing somewhere else, he can be he can reinvent himself like Madonna does every few years. You can you can be who you want to be in this new place. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but without the pointy bra, obviously. Yeah, obviously, yes, but with notable exceptions. Is that why Jerry's got his hand up? Jerry, is that why? Was that the, has she taken the words out of your mouth? No, the, point, Jerry. the pointy bra thing had not occurred to me <laughs> at that point, but now it's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Deb, I, I wanted to just come back on something you said earlier, which is that, you know, about making the, the recce, about uh, coming over here and, 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 and seeing the place as as a place to live and not just as a holiday. Yeah. We actually deal with a lot of people uh, coming from, you know, from further afield, particularly from North America. And often they, they're not able to come over ahead of making the move. In fact, I know one or two people are on the webinar here tonight. Uh, Their first trip to Portugal was that was, was the day they moved. And uh, I just wonder what your thoughts are about that and whether you have any ideas on how, uh, if someone has some trepidation about that, maybe can't make a reconnoiter trip, what would you suggest? My nice, third Jerry. question. Yeah. How yes, do you Jerry. test drive virtually? That's, I guess that's the question. Is How do you do a virtual test drive of Portugal if you well, can't? Well, I, I had to actually, I'd actually go back a step and say, why can't you? Why is it not possible? First of all, um, I mean, some, some are genu- genuine, like, I can't for health reasons, I can't... Um, you know, but but often we tell ourselves things. But is that a truth? You know, like can can I not travel? Because if I was making a move, I would really want to feel the place. So you can look at brochures, you can speak to somebody, um, you can get as much virtual training, but you need to feel a place. Yeah. I, I I think I think I think it's practical reasons. I think you know it's getting the time off. Maybe it's the cost. Um, I, I think those are often the reasons. And it, it, I, I admit, you know, for us Europeans, it's easy. We can hop over here for a day or two, and it's no, it's not, it's inexpensive, and it's not that big, de- big a deal. But it's a major deal if you're coming from the USA or Canada or, or even further afield. And I think that's it, it. It just happens that way that people do that. I if if you're looking at a budget, um, if if you're thinking about a budget of making this long term, because I'm presuming you're talking about a long term move, you know, it's about coming over here to live. Yeah. Then that everybody has a week off. That budget needs to be factored in. I would say because. Mm. I think it's really, really important. Like, you know, if you ever booked a holiday where the brochure looked absolutely amazing, one of your friends said, oh, my God, it was just fantastic. Um, you know, it, th- this holiday was there. And then you get there and you're like, it's nothing like the brochures. Oh, I've just realised that so-and-so likes so-and-so and I don't really like that. I mean, you're not making decisions based on here, are you? You know, it's just here yeah. going, I think I should like it, you know. Yeah. 
So if you were if you were yeah. mentoring somebody, you would really push them. You would man you would manage that objection quite in a, quite a hard way and say, look, you, you, I want you to go, and I want you to look at the reasons why you think you can't go. Is that is that what would be your approach? I would challenge. I would challenge would the you? why. Yeah, I would. I would actually challenge the why. Okay. Um, yeah, I would because I think there's always a way. I always challenge a no. You know, if it's a no, why is it a no? Well, right. I can't because. Let's explore that. You know? Okay, interesting, interesting. If 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 somebody's in that situation and and might want to talk about that a little bit more, let's unpack that after we've concluded the recording because it's a it's a good question. Thank you for that, Jerry. Um, yes, Diana's right. adding such a good point about making the move towards something and not to get away from something. Like me, my husband loves everything that matters about the quality of life in Portugal. My problem is how to help him be more okay with the things he thinks he'd miss about the US, such as not as as being able to play ice hockey not being a good enough soccer football player for portugal standards no one is don't worry about that uh, uh diana's husband um and not having his mini cooper roadster now that's serious what are your thoughts about how to help your spouse who may have difficulty with big transitions that's a fantastic question it, yeah. quite at the beginning I'd, li I'd like you to expand if you would on the distinction between moving towards something rather than away from something. Cause there's an old fra phrase, isn't there? Like wherever you go, there you are. And in this instance, you know, you, you can bring luggage, but don't bring baggage. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? Yeah. So um, yeah. If, if you think about, if you think about the things that you, you want, you want right now yeah, and the things that you want to leave, it's getting really clear on, actually is that a truth <laughs> you know so like um I you know a lot of my clients have said oh I, I just want to be out in the fresh air I exercise more and actually deep down that's an that can often be an excuse because you know there's a whole summer and I, I still sat on the sofa and when I get that new life I'm gonna I'm gonna exercise and I'm gonna be we always it's human behavior we like to make excuses and if we put things in in if we put things in the future, it's something to aim at, and we don't have to deal with them now. Oh my and God! So, so the, I mean, th that then would be if you were if you were mentoring a couple, would you be as challenging as you're you're suggesting now, on, as with both of them sat on the sofa there, or, or virtually on a Zoom call? No, and would you I push it? I mean, if 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 the husband is saying I, I won't be able to do this, in, and I'm concerned about it in Portugal, would you say is that really true? Would you be would you be pushing that? I would ask, I always ask the questions. Yes. So it opens them up to ask the questions themselves. Okay. So all right. We all, we all have our little baggage of things that we've picked up over life and we think it, 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 it's it's how we live, but actually it's unpacking that and going, yeah, I love that, but actually I love that sport. Uh, and it, it, to be honest, it opens up a big conversation about spouses because you'll always have a lead one who wants to do something and yeah. the one that kind of doesn't. And a lot of women drag their men and go, come on, we're going, I really want this it. This is what we're doing. Yeah, but actually the man needs to come to it in his own way. Wow. Because you don't can, want... I tell you what, Deb, if we can crack that tonight, <laughs> <laughs> this will be... <laughs> <laughs> That'll be well, fun. It's basically oh. asking the question, what do you want? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's quite simple, isn't it? And, uh, you know, sometimes we we, we overlook. overcomplicate. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We, we can get overcomplicated and we can go into what we think might happen if we ask that question rather than just asking it, which is which would be an interesting thing. But you, I, I mean, presumably you found yourself in this situation where it's a, it's a cup oh, and one yeah. is. I mean, no, it's very rare, I guess, for a couple to be matched in the sense of they both 100% want to come. There'll be different reservations with, with each of them. How do you manage that? Well, my husband's a coach as well. And so <laughs> he, he often, <laughs> sometimes it's like, okay, because sometimes men just want to work with men. Yes. Um, but it's very much, I think, as as we go through life, we don't really check in as as husband and wife to go, are you happy with what we're doing right now and where we're living? And it, it, we don't really check in. We just keep on going. And this is a point where you both, it's open conversation where you say, what do you want? It's basically understanding what the other wants. And it's all having those conversations opens up a whole new level because then it's actually saying, 
I'm a bit frightened about going. And the other one will probably be really frightened too. Which you is know, a so, good thing to find out now rather than later. Isn't well, you can it? support each other better. Yes. Yeah. And if there are things that are covered over a little bit or awkward and difficult, don't want to go there in the conversation, they, they may well come up later if they're not dealt yeah. with. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, moving countries, there is going to be an element of stress. Yeah, of course. And so it's basically understanding that while you're not navigating it. If you can navigate that that moving country where you're like, I've got you and you've got me. I yeah. know I, I know what you want and I know what I want. It's almost like you're going with a roadmap where you go, we've got this. Yes. And so the wobbles that, the, the unexpected, you can manage better. Because you talked about it. You've it, it, it you talked about it. You're not just jumping in going, fingers crossed, you know, because yes. that can yes. be scary. And we've all got experience of that in our lives, haven't we, where that hasn't worked out terribly well, just hoping for the best. It Sometimes it does, of course, but sometimes it does. Exactly, yeah. well. And it could have been distinguished with a conversation and some open questions. Very good. So to answer Diana's question, then what are your thoughts about how to help your spouse who might have difficulty with big, big transitions? That's to have the conversation, to open up the questions and sit yeah. and listen and be available. It, it's it's hearing him out, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, you know, he's he'll have his own views. You've got your views. It's him understanding okay, what does good look like for him? What does better look like for him? What does exciting look like for him? Yes. You know, and that's why a recce trip is really good because it's like, you know, at the moment, we're, we're before we live here, we're all looking at it in a certain view. You then find a, you know, he might find, a, I think he was talking about um, a, a class or something. This is even better. You know, what if he even gets better? Yes. What if he's playing it outside and he's doing more of it because it's more available? We never, we, we never know. We often look at it from a negative standpoint, but actually what if what we're going to get, going to get is even better? So a bit of solution focus after you've exposed yeah. your fears and your, and, your, and your reservations and away you go with that joint roadmap that you've both discussed yeah. and you've got something to refer to rather than those dark and murky things that don't get talked about. Very good. Uh, yeah. Tom says, it reminds me of the song Tightrope from The Greatest Showman. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. It's all bit, Jerry might, it's all been an adventure that comes with a breathtaking view of the lyrics. Yeah, this true, true. isn't it? It's, that's a pretty good soundtrack for what we're talking about. Um, Ed and Sharon, the ones who wanted to move to a warmer climb, as George put it. Um, our plan is to feel it for four to five months from late 25 into 26. So they're going for that sort of touchy-feely, intuitive approach that yeah. I think you're referring to there. Um, yeah, Jennifer, I, I love everything about Expats Portugal. These events, the incredible community, the support in making the transition to Portugal. We so appreciate EI and Duarte Cruz and our new Portuguese tax accountant. Fantastic. And Deb, your words are resonating strongly with me. We are at the beginning of our journey to split our time between Ashland and Guimarães. Ah, you mentioned that before. Yes, you're in Ashland at the moment, hoping to be in Guimarães. We spent three months in Guimarães last summer and fell in love with this special town. Because of our time there, we have no doubts about settling into our new town in Portugal. So they've had a good um, tryout, a test drive of Guimarães, and, and that feels right for them. Good practical question from Tom Smith. How long should the trial run, the test drive be uh, there, Deb? So I think the first one can be, um, I think... It, that can be even a short weekend. Obviously, if you're in Europe, if you're farther afield, you know, you might want to spend more time. The the I think you every time you come over here to do the recce trip, you need to get clear on what are your concerns. And so understanding the concerns, like if you've got children, it's understanding the school system, it's booking, you know, six or seven schools to look at. Um, but even before that, it's looking at areas. It's, um, you know, I, I would say there's a lot of practical things to do before the trip. It's looking at finances, visas. You know, I always say it's all the practicality stuff as well. It's just as important. But then it's kind of, right, do I do a, a week? I think a week is enough. Or I think if you do it for longer and you're trying to, you're almost kind of, over, over it can be overwhelming because you're looking at schools places to live general okay. feel and all of a sudden the experience can become quite stressful so what was going to be exciting you know trying to cram everything in if you can do smaller trips yeah. then then go away and do some online research 
and then it's doing a little bit more. It depends where you live and what's accessible, but I think there's it depends on what your concerns are. Always go head in, head on for that first concern. Like, is it housing? Is it is it schools? Is it just a general feel for the place? You know, is it is it good restaurants in the area? You know, whatever is coming up for you. In your boxes, the things you need. Yeah, I go yeah, yeah. like a needs assessment, right? I'm making sure those needs are met. Presumably you would recommend programming in downtime as well though, right? Because you know, that's all the oh, God, yeah. stuff, isn't it? So to, to really get a feel for a place, you need to be being there, don't you? Rather than just running around, you know, doing all administrative stuff. So what sort of balance with the doing and the being would you recommend? Half and half. Really? Right. Okay. <laughs> right. I mean, that sounds good. I guess for people who think I've got to get all of this done, you know, that. No, so if you just want, if you just, if it's, if you're kind of feeling into that, I also believe in synchronicities, you know, you get an idea. I really want to live there. You go on Sky Scanner. There's a flight to Lisbon for 20 quid. Okay. You're like, Hmm, should, should we just go for a quick weekend? Let's just get a feel for the place for the sake of the money. Just go get a feel for the place everything's up in the air it's an excitement kind of energy is it possible you know oh it's getting a feel then that desire is set you're like i want to make this happen yeah. then it's the first recce trip where you go right i really mean business here i need to get as much information as possible um so i i think it's the, there's so many layers to this and it depends how fast you want to go and it depends how it, everybody's so different well, there yeah. is that's a factor in as well, isn't there? But we get the general gist: dip your toe and then dip your foot, and <laughs> uh, and yeah. then and then and then move along with the process and and, and let it unfold. And, and certainly, your emphasis, your particular style, is to is to have people have a good feeling about the place. And you and you for you, that's difficult to do that without actually being there. Um, Tom says, if I'm away from my job for too long, they start locking me out of my computer. That sounds like a good result to me, Tom. I just <laughs> yeah. completed. Oh, this is good. So Tom's, I think Tom, to some extent, has been doing what you suggested. I, I just... Proof of concept. Love yeah, it. Proof of concept trip. Could I order a meal in a restaurant? Could I get around? He, he, did you have these questions before you came then, Tom? I, I'm guessing you did. Could I order a meal in a restaurant? Could I get around? Could I buy something in a grocery store, even if it was just a bottle of water? I passed these tests easily. Would you work on lists with people like that then as the mentor? And I, I guess that's a bit of a free value tonight, isn't it, to make a list of that kind? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's great but that feels around language as opposed to emotion so it's like the language you know we're lucky enough to to speak english where a lot of people speak english i would say speaking the language is further down the line don't you know as long as we're trying it's great yes. but nobody expects you to turn up and start having a full-blown conversation you know and you know hate hate to say town to total brit but there's always google translate you know you total you know, brit you well, i'm total brit yeah but, yeah. but it's true yeah. and it's, as long it's as absolutely you're... true and it does save you bacon from from time to or your prosciutto from time to time yeah. so that is that is a good tip and the only people who expect that to be having a, a full-blown portuguese conversation are the people themselves you're absolutely right the culture doesn't expect that i think generally speaking the culture expects you to try and make an effort but you don't have to be. You don't have to have a degree in Portuguese, thankfully, uh, before you arrive, and that's an unnecessary pressure you might be putting on yourself. Um, yeah. Diana, again, agreeing with you, I think here visiting and travelling around Portugal and experiencing the magic of different seasons is also very helpful. That is, don't always go on recce trips in the same month. So, if possible, and you can make multiple trips before you come, notwithstanding those people who just say I'm going and that's it, as Jerry referred to. Um, if you can make multiple trips, maybe spread them over at different times um, of the yeah. year as well to get a different sense. It's a bit when you're buying a house isn't it and real estate agents say you know drive by at different times and and, and look at it at different times of day right yeah. um let's conclude then on the recording here with a bit more about mindset and you know living the dream literally that's what we're talking about here isn't it is, is talking about living the dream and making it happen and ultimately living the dream as you seem to be doing you made it happen for yourself yeah. um, tell us a bit more then about the mindset change that's required for that well it's about how do you want to live? Um, and it's also that growth mindset, um, especially around children as well. We think um, as parents, we're concerned about how will it be for them? But um, the clients that I've worked with and moved here, they, the children just all of a sudden moving country. It's like somebody just taken the blinkers off and said, I can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. I can, if I've moved countries now, I can, 
this that I've got there's more possibility for me and the more possibility you show your children that this is amazing so initially yeah I might miss my friends but seriously it, they see a whole new world and children adapt so so much so much quicker but in terms of growth mindset it's like what do you want out of life I mean this this the whole it's an adventure life is an adventure what do you want mm. how do you want to live it what does moving abroad mean you know and it's not often you know it's not it's not always for the sun it's what, how it's going to make you feel and it's almost like a fantasy you know it's going to oh I can see me and my husband and we're sat there with a bottle of sangria and you know it's just uh, it's like but are you doing that now mm -hmm. because being in the sunshine isn't just going to miraculously make you sat there drinking wine and everything's glorious it's actually kind of thinking and sometimes it's just a little conversation it's it's those it's that mindset of saying i really i really want to do something more with my life i really want to do something and i don't know what it looks like and i don't know if i dare do it but i'm going to explore and i think if you're with a spouse that is the most it, it, you just admire that person. There might be oh, fear, okay. right. but, it, but, it, but it's kind of like, it's that it, it, it's that feeling. I think moving abroad has that same feeling when you decide to go all in on a relationship. It's like, are we doing this? Okay, and all of a sudden your life, feel, it, your life feels full of possibilities. And you can and get so, better results, can't you, with, that, right. kind of, yeah. with that kind of thinking? Yeah. And so okay. it's kind of the growth mindset and thinking, I've got this, what else do I want? And it's looking at different possibilities. You know, we think, oh, I'm going to get a job. Well, what if you don't get a job? What if you do something, if you create a, um, a little business that starts as a bit of a side hustle that you're selling something, some kind of online course or something, and it just gradually builds. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's another possibility. You know, we have a lot of, uh, we, we limit ourselves. Yes. So the growth mindset is about being unlimited. Yes. And I don't know whether this is intuitive or counterintuitive, but and, and the, I mean, this might be come as quite a surprise as well to some people because it's not ten, it doesn't tend to be the way these things are normally done. But are you suggesting then that um, if you're if you if you want the growth mindset and you're saying to yourself, I'll be happy when I move, yeah. it might be better to start thinking about being happy now because that will make for a better move does that make sense it's, that's that, that's right yeah because that's that's often that's often you know all the tele programs are based on you know you'll be going to a place in the sun you'll be going somewhere different and things will be better then yeah your approach your philosophy about this seems to be make that the case now change your mindset now yeah. and that will make the chances of your successful move to the place you're going to even more successful yeah, because if you, you know, if you stay indoors, you go to work, um, if you've got kind of a run of the mill life that you're trying to get out of the rat race, yet you're going to be working remotely, but not really change anything. All of a sudden, you're, you could be sat in front of your, you know, in front of your mat. Yeah, the sun's shining, but your life's exactly the same. And so it's getting clear, actually, maybe I need to reduce and go down three days a week. Maybe I want to work for myself. Maybe I do something totally different. Mm -hmm. And there's all these questions. And, you know, it sounds scary because you're about to move country, but now's the great time to do it. Because well, it's like, it's like you, someone's giving you a clean sheet of paper. Yes. And saying, what do you want? Yeah. And it's working on it. Because, you know, there aren't lucky people and not lucky people. They're just people who know what they want and then they make aligned action every single day to get it. Throwing in these controversial little truth bombs here and there in the conversation, Deb. I, I think, I mean, this is great. So it's a bit like, you know, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it or I see it when I believe it sort of thinking as well, that distinction too. All right. So well, let's go to, let's, let's conclude the recording. Let's give you the last word here and maybe a top tip or, you know, your top three tips to somebody considering moving to, to Portugal and considering this question of how do you know you're making the right choice? And I'm guessing the emphasis is, is on no, isn't it? How do you know you're making the right choice? Uh, what, 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 what's, what would you like to say in conclusion? 
I would say that you need to be asking yourself those questions based on knowing you and what you're looking for, as opposed to being on forums, absolutely saying, I'm thinking about coming to Portugal, what's it like? Or I really would like to try and find out this, that and the other. Um, they all have a different view of life. They're all looking for different things. You will not find one person like you. And so it's understanding why you're doing it. And it's being in a playful curiosity mindset by going, oh, I think I quite like that. And I, it, it, it's knowing you. And Amazing. Then, then and that, bring, that, yeah, that brings us back full circle, doesn't it? Because I think when we started out, you were saying, you know, in many ways, this is the difficult bit. And, you know, I'd like to think we've nailed it with Expats Portugal. The technical things, you know, we work with a, an amazing group of people who can help you with those, those technical things you need to do to move to Portugal, the great professionals in, in, in the whole process of moving to Portugal. And you're proposing that actually this is a slightly more difficult bit of knowing what you want, which means you have to ask those questions and not mm -hmm. make assumptions and, and do that sort of work and not just try and find out, get affirmed by complete strangers on social media. Yeah. I think that's, that's, the, that, that's the passing thing, you all know, right. um, we, we're all so different. But I would also say, if you think there's a way, there normally is a way. Very good. OK, let's leave it right there. We'll take a few questions for people or from people who don't want to be uh, um, recorded asking their questions, because I'm sure there will be some. Thank you, Deb, for the time being um, and for being with us tonight on the Expats Portugal webinar. Thank you.